So what I'm talking about is of the opportunities offered by the peace agreement between the UAE and Israel. Let's not forget the UAE is even, imagine this small little country is now even flying around Mars. What kind of business opportunities do we have here? What I realized, because I was uh, in international companies, I was working like Jamie also once with... Uh, Uh, it was it's a big pleasure to give a word to you so the floor is yours please go ahead well thank you thank you alexander for the kind introduction and to give me the opportunity to give a presentation about the new opportunities in the middle east that of course is great so what i'm talking about is of the opportunities offered by the peace agreement between the uae and israel it's nearly already six months which have passed and there is this great development where suddenly Israel becomes part of the Middle East. It's be part of the MN of the Middle East and North Africa region. As before, it was mostly connected to the Western part of the world, to Europe. And now great doors are opening by having through the Abraham Accords peace agreement of the 15th of September, now the opportunity is to have agreements with the UAE, United Arab Emirates, with Bahrain, with Sudan, Morocco. And this of course follows the old agreements between Egypt and Jordan. Having lived in the Middle East since uh, on and off since the 70s, I can see those agreements between Egypt and Jordan. These were agreements which were done on the top between the governments above all. The population was not so much linked and part of it. They also, of course, had difficulties making a peace with a country where perhaps the parts of the family were lost or were suffering because of all the developments there. The agreement with the UAE, Bahrain, of course, is completely different as they were not involved in any conflictive situations and the UAE being part or tried to be also very much advanced in many, many things. They, of course, enjoy that they have now an agreement with Israel. Let's not forget the UAE is even, imagine this small little country is now even flying around Mars. Now this Thanks to their development, thanks to their leadership, who have great visions, great plans, and through that, they managed to get ahead and do this. This is really a big, big development. These new opportunities is also above all because it's between two young countries and we don't have any issues between them because they just didn't have an agreement up to now. It was kind of, it was, since they were part of the Arab League, they were a kind of a conflictive situation with Israel, although never any actual fighting took place between them. And now through these agreements with Israel and the different countries, now it is opening up more to the East. And it, Dubai has a great opportunity, it's a great location to serve as an Israeli hub because now Israeli products can be sold through the UAE to Iraq, to many countries in Africa where Israel has a, not a, the best agreement uh, situation with. And this of course is a huge, huge opportunity because products from Israel, which are leading products in many things, of course, is a great, great opportunity. It's the opportunity for Israel and of course an opportunity for the UAE. I also would like to point out that it is a great opportunity for Russians or Russian speakers in general, because after 1991, after the opening up, many Russian speakers who had some Jewish links moved to Israel and remembered that part of their family has a link to Israel. And they are, many of them are in IT, in crypto technology, FinTech, blockchain, IT security, and these Russian speakers, of course, also, I assume all those who have been in Dubai knows them, plenty of Russian speakers here. Through that, many developments are now arising, opening new opportunities because those Russian speakers see, okay, we are in two countries. We have plenty of 
IT technologies or fintech technologies are in the hand, or at least administered by Russian speakers. So this, uh, since we have here, I guess, nearly 200 participants at this conference, and many of them are from Russian speaking countries, I would point out, this is an opportunity for all of you. And definitely there are many Russian speakers in the UAE. And now if I go to hotels currently, like this morning I went to a hotel, I would say 60 or 70% of the persons there were Russian speakers, or at least it sounded very Russian to me, not only from Russia itself, but from Russian speaking countries in general. They come here because they are definitely welcome and they have plenty of opportunities. Many see also that Dubai is starting to go up again. You go up because there are plenty of opportunities because the real estate prices have been now very low and this is a great opportunity to buy. And also since Dubai together with Israel is on the top of the list of vaccination, I think in Israel about 60% are vaccinated. In, in Dubai I think about 55%. So great developments. That means it means also that these two countries are the first ones which are getting out of the Corona crisis, which means plenty of possibilities for business. Well, what kind of business opportunities do we have here? What I realized, because I was uh, in international companies, I was working like Jamie also once with uh, with Credit Suisse at that time, I was 30 years ago in Bahrain, looking after Saudi Arabia and Qatar. At that time and still up to now, international companies usually had two desks, an Arab desk for Arabian countries and an Israeli desk, although both are more or less in the same part of the world. But it was not possible to mix it. Now the great opportunity is now here that these desks can be joined, they can be together. And many now even think of making just one regional headquarter, which will cover Israel and the Arab countries. And many, of course, think, well, where should we put that up? And most probably they will not say Bahrain, perhaps it's not the ideal place for that. Perhaps Dubai, of course, would be a great location because it is really, it has a very well advanced infrastructure, has excellent flight connections to all countries uh, between Dubai and Israel. There have been, when everything was open last uh, November, December, about eight flights a day. And of course, there are plenty of flights also to the Arabic speaking countries through Emirates, through Etihad or through Fly Dubai or other airlines. So definitely great, great opportunities. Many regional offices for Israel were set up up to now in Istanbul because Istanbul, Turkey had uh, open agreements and uh, open uh, borders and they had uh, am ambassadors in both countries. So they had uh, normal connections between the countries and therefore many Israelis who wanted to go into Arabic speaking countries, they set it up in Istanbul. But of course, there is perhaps a little bit more difficult. The infrastructure is perhaps also not in every as much advanced as the one in Dubai. And therefore now many change their regional office from Istanbul to Dubai. A great advantage, of course, is also that although the UAE is an Arab country, the official language is Arabic, the laws are in Arabic, but if you come here, it's difficult to find somebody who really speaks English because the local population is only about, uh, sorry, to speak Arabic, the local population is only about 10% and 90%, imagine 90% of the population are foreigners. Many of those foreigners, well, they just come here because they're working in construction or somewhere in a supermarket. That many, like me, we were attracted by having the possibility of the opportunity to be in a country where we don't have to pay any tax. This, of course, is a complete different ball game than in other countries. You can concentrate fully on business and this definitely worked very well for me, who I'm here now since 2004, but I see many, many others have plenty of advantages. When we also compare Israel and the UAE, we also see that many Israelis 
speak Arabic. So definitely, if they were set up in Dubai, then they also have plenty of easy possibilities to talk with potential new clients, which they perhaps have in Iraq, in other countries of the Middle East. And as I pointed out, and I pointed out again, both countries, Israel, of course, with a certain uh, a few steps ahead, is our leading in fintech, in blockchain, as Jamie before uh, also pointed out, is something very important, and crypto technologies, which are excellent ways of for new opportunities in the future. Also, when we talk about diamond, and I can imagine many Russian ladies are wearing, having diamonds, which somehow have a Middle Eastern link. We, they bought through Israeli companies out of Belgium or also through Dubai, because the DMCC, the Dubai Multi Commodity Center, where they have 18,000 companies, is also a leading diamond trading center. So these are opportunities for large and small companies and many, many multinationals sees now opportunities of oppor uh, synergy possibilities that they can reduce the cost and at the same time offer better uh, services to their clientele. But also many small and medium enterprises, SMEs, will have huge possibilities. As I pointed out here in Dubai, everybody is welcome. It's easy to set up. We have more than 40 different free zones where companies can set up, where they don't need to have a local partner. So they don't need to have an Emirati as a 51% shareholder. They can have 100% of the shares. And what we also see, the opportunities between the two countries, each country is uh, really eager to get to know the other side. There are chambers of commerce which regularly visit each other's country. There are business council who have the regular webinars like the webinar we have right now and show and present the different advantages there. are. The Dubai Multi Commodity Center, which I mentioned before, they even set up an office already in Israel. Imagine so quickly, within half a year, already they have an office there. When we compare that with the peace agreement, which was between Egypt and Jordan, it took years, years to really set up a little bit something and the whole thing has been sleep sleeping. You see very, very little movement between the countries and it's completely different ball game than the one between Dubai, the UAE and Israel. Imagine over Christmas, over Hanukkah time, there were more than 80,000 Israelis visiting a country where up to September, they had no way of visiting it with an Israeli passport. And now they had the chance to come and visit it and play, stay here. And also quite a few have set up now companies here. Also the ADGM, that we have here quite a few abbreviations. This is the Abu Dhabi Global Market. It's very eager and has regular webinars and setups with Israeli counterparts. And the Dubai Airport Free Zone is also eager and advanced in many things. When we think of Israel, then perhaps you, some of you who are as old as I am, perhaps we remember the 60s and 70s where we said Israel, oh, this is this country it's this very special country which was in kind of a desert and they were able to go back and find ways to get better usage of water and now it has become quite a green country and then in agriculture technology they are very very much advanced and all of you who have been in Dubai in the UAE know of course that we are in a desert there's plenty of buildings going on but all the things which you see is green is with, with water, which is desalinated water, but it's a huge and very expensive way of doing it. And here the technologies of Israel who know how to make it easier, of course, are very much welcome. Recycling also a big, big issue where we can use the technologies from the Israel and also, of course, from other countries. Real estate and living conditions, also something very interesting this morning. The, I just was with an Israeli client who is on the way to buy property in Dubai. And I was wondering, why the heck do you want to buy property in Dubai? And then she explained to me, well, in Tel Aviv, to have an apartment with Z view, 
you pay a certain amount, which is very expensive. And if she does get a similar apartment or even a better apartment, she pays only a third or a quarter of the price what she would pay in Israel. In addition, the beach in Dubai, she can use the whole year round or for July, August, of course, is rather a suffering if you are at the beach in Dubai, but at least you have plenty of possibilities to live here also through the very hot season, be it with the shopping malls, being in the offices where everything, everything is of course air conditioned and you don't suffer as much as you would sometimes imagine that it must be really unbearable. And so this definitely is a huge advantage with low prices and the prices are so attractive that the real estate is sort of already reflecting that in Dubai, the prices are going slowly up. And definitely what we also can say, all of you who have been in Dubai, I would assume that you all felt quite safe. Me coming from the country where Jamie Vrihoff Drosset, a previous speaker comes from, I mean, from Switzerland, I do have to say, I feel safer in Dubai than in certain parts of Zurich or Geneva. I definitely feel very safe here. My son who grew up here, he went everywhere. Being only 12, 14 years old, he was around with the taxi and we were, felt very safe and there were never anything happened, of course. And also we don't know, we are not aware of anything happened being two similar kids as my son was at that time. So definitely a very safe place. And what is also to say it's easy and affordable to have staff to up who support you, a nanny, driver, cook, nurses, all this is possible to have with prices since many people here are coming from India, from Philippines, from parties from Africa, as they see that they here in Dubai, they have better salaries than they would back home. Of course, it's still a big difference with the, uh, with the salaries uh, you would get in, in Europe for such positions, but it's definitely an advantage when you're here. As mentioned already, tourism has been in, has increased tremendously. The flights to Israel is only three and a half hours, and now it is open for UAE passports. And of course, Israel, as for many Russian speakers, of course, is historically very attractive because the three main language uh, church uh, or do you say religions be it uh, the one from Israel, the Jews, be it the Christians, be it the Muslims, we have our sites in Israel, in Jerusalem, in Hebron, in Akka, in many other places. And of course, this attracts many people who want to see it. But also the other way we see at the moment, there are more Israelis uh, coming as tourists to Dubai than the other way around. And many are attracted also that the restaurants quickly adapted here and that you have now kosher food available. This, of course, is a great, great uh, opportunity for those who wear this is of importance. And what we also see when, when you look at my photo, you see I'm in that age. Retirement is now a huge opportunity for Dubai. You can get now retirement visas. This is now the new hit besides the visa for working visa or the investor visa, shareholder of a company. You can get also a retirement visa and this is attracting many people, many old people, of course, because they would like to have a safe place to spend the winter months, be it from October to, Feb uh, to April. And that, of course, in Dubai is the ideal location. Up to now, Cyprus and still, of course, Cyprus is a very important spot for Israelis, be it as a very near weekend vacation spot or to, to meet uh, clients which who, who don't want to go to Israel because they are linked to other Arabic countries. And of course, even for marriage solutions, many to want go to Cyprus to get married to avoid orthodox marriages. All these are now possibilities to be done in the UAE. And then don't forget, we have the Expo, the Expo 2020. Well, I would say now it's the Expo 2021, which is 
scheduled to start on the 1st of October and goes for six months till the end of March 2022. It is an ideal opportunity to show the new realities in this region. And of course, the Russian speaking countries, they also have their pavilions. Israel will have a pavilion and originally there were about 20 million visitors expected. I would assume that number will not reach that high level because of Corona, but nevertheless, I'm sure Dubai will do its utmost to attract people from all over the world. Tax situation, well, I've pointed it out a few times, no tax besides value added tax of 5%. And very interesting, there are more than 90 tax treaties with many, many leading countries in the, countries in the world. Israel, well, I guess will be one of the next ones which is coming out. Then since a short time, you also have foundations in Dubai, which are ideal for Israelis who want to set up something. Something I also would like to mention is the substance issue, which came up from Europe and many countries or Europe has said companies need to have structure, I mean, you have uh, substance in the form of offices, in the form of employees, in the form of MDM management at the place of the, look of the company. There's, of course, everybody who has been in the Caribbean. It's a little bit difficult for Cayman and BVI or even Panama. And Dubai, the UAE, of course, make it very easy to set up offices here. There are plenty of offices available. Employees, you can have employees from any part of the world, be it from Russia, be it from Uzbekistan, be it from Africa, be it from Latin America, everybody is welcome. And of course, for the management is also an ideal location to be here because here they don't pay any tax. That of course is a great, great opportunity. Migration of companies, what, what is the reason, what is the advantage of migration of companies? This means like we have migration of people because people adapt and say, well, perhaps it would be ideal, it would be better in another country. Well, for people, sometimes it's a bit more difficult to mobile, to migrate than for companies. Companies now can migrate quite easily and can go from one country to a country which perhaps is more suitable for them. And Dubai has convinced many companies or the owners of companies that they move to Dubai because by migration of a company, you keep the history of the company. That means if it is a 10 year old company, it continues to be a 10 year old company. You keep the track record and above all, which is very important before it was mentioned a few times that it's difficult to open bank accounts. It's a huge headache for everybody. And if you migrate companies, you can keep the bank account. So if you are migrating from the BVI, from Cayman with a bank account in the US, with a bank account in Switzerland, and now you move to Dubai, well, the bank account continues to be at that place. Also, the contracts will remain the same. You don't have to make new contracts, where then, of course, the other side will say, well, let's change a little bit the commission party you get and so on. All this is, of course, a huge, huge advantage. So everybody who has been in Dubai, in the UAE knows, of course, infrastructure is really excellent. Reputation wise, well, I think it also has quite a good reputation. It's, it is also show this new problem, Corona, a new problem which came up a year ago. If you look at the different countries in the world, if I look at Switzerland, where I'm coming from, I'm not so proud to say how they are handling it. But I'm proud to say how the UAE is handling it. And I got already my shot, already my vaccination already in December and beginning of January. So I'm quite happy that the, I'm here in Dubai. And I, if I compare it with many of my Swiss colleagues in Switzerland, they're still waiting or hope that they soon will can get it. But some of them say, well, I don't get it before July or somewhere never. So everybody is welcome, no tax. Well, I guess I mentioned it several times. And also very important, we have this financial center, the Dubai International Financial Center, where we have plenty of banks. 
Swiss banks, Russian banks, Chinese banks, banks from all over the world with asset management and financial advisory services. And who knows, Jamie, perhaps one day we can welcome you here over as well. Definitely also your clients could at least have the bank accounts here. Definitely plenty of advantages. When you move to a, from one country to another, if you have family, then of course it's always an issue. Well, why the heck do I move to another country? Well, because I want to give the best to my family. And then of course you also have to think, what kind of schools do they have here? And Dubai, great, they have more than 200 private schools. My son went here to the high school, did the International Baccalaureate, and subsequently could study in universities in Europe without any entry tests, because with the International Baccalaureate, which is accepted worldwide, he had the open doors. And the airlines, I assume you also see the airlines which are still in the air. Plenty of them are from the Middle East, be it Emirates, be it uh, at the had so plenty of opportunities or even Qatar Airlines. Shopping facilities, well, I don't want to enter that too much, but definitely the ladies know here we have plenty of possibilities. Then it's also possible to off to migrate within the UAE. So for example, if you have a RAC, RAC offshore company, you could migrate, upgrade it to become a, off, a real company, a free zone company. So that's a great opportunity. You can have then offices, you can get visas and you can get that all done within a few weeks. So here is summarizing again, the various advantages because I see I'm coming to the end of my presentation and the quality of life, definitely very high political stability. I am, have been in this region since the seventies and what I can say, this region definitely always has problems and the UA always managed to make the best out of the problems which surrounding countries had and they advanced and advanced and are now absolutely the top country within the Middle East. So great opportunities for everybody of us, and I'm sure also you participants, great opportunities. And I'm also looking forward to seeing you, all of you at the next Bosco conference. Of course, it's great to see you somehow in the webinars, but of course it would be better to see you physically. And I understand that the next physical Bosco conference will be on the 31st of March in uh, Dubai, as the last one was in November, which was a huge success. And uh, this also shows how Bosco is really convinced and shows that they are ready to go with the latest technologies and latest advancements. And I wish to everybody stay safe, get vaccinated, and we are looking forward to see you soon. Here are the places of our two offices in Abu Dhabi and in the Swiss Tower in Dubai. And if you have any questions, uh, you can address them, of course, by email or in whatever way you think suitable. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Also, it was really interesting to receive uh, information from uh, your, uh, uh, from the person who lives in uh, Dubai. And uh, we have, you have already answered in several questions of our participants, for example, about direct flights from Israel to to Dubai or travel requirements for visitors from both sides. But I have one question for you. So at the end of January this year, the government of United Arab Emirates said uh, that uh, several uh, historical changes in the um, legislation of um, uh, United Arab Emirates is expect are expected. So uh, for example, in their uh, law of citizenship and uh, that uh, for the first time in the history of the country uh, so uh, the foreigners will uh, have the opportunity to receive uh, uh, national passports uh, from United Arab Emirates for foreign investors, for doctors, for scientists, for painters, for, uh, for families uh, of uh, such persons. Uh, maybe you have more information about this, maybe you can uh, explain more uh, on this regard, thank you. Well, unfortunately, Alexander, I cannot uh, give you too much optimism for that, but definitely is clear Dubai, the UAE is very well advanced in marketing. So it definitely was great to inform 
that it is possible to get the citizenship, the passport from here, but it will not be a competitor to St. Kitts and Nevis, to Portugal, to Malta or Cyprus. This is only for very special people. And although I'm here since uh, 17 years, I'm not a nuclear scientist. I am not the fastest in 100 meter swimming. So it would be, I get very difficult for me to get that. And I, in general, I would not speculate too much on that. I would go for the old way and say, let's get residency and that everybody can get. So that is a great, great thing. And you know how long it takes how to get it. So this is the great thing, but to speculate and think, well, within one or two or three years, I get my passport here. I would not speculate okay. at all on that. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Also